Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a thankfully sunny San Diego, which isn't always the case these days, unfortunately. And today I am delighted to be joined from Iowa by Eric, Dr. Eric Recker. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, and Eric is a dentist, I think probably the first dentist I've ever had on the show. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a conversation with the dentist that doesn't include him lecturing me on my flossing. So yeah. that's always a first. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to avoid that. <laughs> so Eric is dentist, husband, father, keynote speaker, elite success coach, author, pilot, mountain climber and recovering triathlete. So you have no spare time, I guess. That's I'm almost exhausted from reading that. Uh, and in the second half of his life, he's committed to helping people shorten the distance between to becoming the best version of themselves and learning to win the now. And uh, so you have uh, one book that's already out called uh, Win the Now, and you have another book, that damn an uh, analogy that's coming out uh, in April. Yes. Yeah, very excited for that. Excellent, excellent. So um, let's let's uh, get right into it, Eric. Uh, Number one, what what made you decide, you know, your second half of life, what made you decide that you wanted to help people shorten the distance between coming the best, becoming the best version of themselves? Because I think it's a noble undertaking, because I think a lot of people, a, a, a lot of people, I think today are so confused, they're so distracted, there's so many elements like impacting them that they they don't know how to become the best version of themselves. Yeah, so my story was born from burnout. I went through three pretty serious rounds of burnout because apparently I'm a slow learner. And when you have as many things going on as I did in that season of my life, I really didn't have any time to do any self-awareness and learning about myself, self-discovery, stuff like that. So I nearly walked away from my dental practice. I was so mm -hmm. burnt out. I was dealing with uh, chest pain, heart palpitations. I was yeah. having panic attacks. It, it got really bad. So I actually had a plan in place to sell my dental practice to one of my associates. And about a month before that was going to happen, he was in a horrific car accident. He survived, but it became very clear that it wasn't going to be possible to go through with that transaction. So I was faced with this realization that this problem that I was trying to go around uh, burnout, if I would have walked away from my dental practice, burnout would have followed me. Right. I would have found it elsewhere. Uh, I found out at that point that I had to go through it and I had to learn some things to do to go through it. I had to survive. I had to keep moving forward. Turns out that selling my dental practice would have been the worst mistake of my life. Wow. And so I've pivoted. I now have a partner in my dental practice uh, so that I'm, I'm not alone in trying to lead it. It's been a huge step. And so I'm faced with this story and this journey that I have that is so powerful that if I don't share it with other people, then I'm going to get to the end of my life and wish that I had. Right. So right. that's where it's all come from. And so at this point in life, I'm seeing patients three days a week still in my dental practice. And I am doing everything else on the other two or sometimes four days a week. Yeah. So what's interesting what you said, there's a couple of things I just wanted to come back on there. Um, the first thing you mentioned about, about burnout, right? I mean, let's be honest, we we live in a culture and especially a, a corporate and business culture that celebrates, celebrates stress, celebrates being it's like the a badge of honor. You know, the person who works the longest hours, the person who's always stressed, we kind of associate that with, well, they're the really committed and successful ones. And, and, it's, and it's like we, we need to kind of flip that thing on its head because it, it's the opposite, right? It really is. The rest of the world is laughing at us as they see how stressed out we are, how hard we're pushing ourselves, how many hours we're putting in. Uh, we wear it like a badge of honor. When we run into people, we say, how are you doing? One of the first things we hear is busy. Oh, I'm so mm -hmm. busy. And we're always busy. We wear busyness as a badge of honor, almost to the point that if we don't feel like we're over busy, we feel like there's something wrong and we need mm -hmm. to add something else to our plate. Yeah. And and unfortunately, a lot of that comes from you know, a place of fear, too. Uh, but the other thing you mentioned was self-awareness. And, and I wanted to come back to come back to that, because for me, self-awareness 
is the is the thing that holds people back the most from from living their best life from even succeeding in their careers in in relationships and anything but it's a tough thing to do is to go on a journey of self-awareness and and i can honestly say i wish i'd gone on one a lot earlier in my life could it but uh but thankfully today at least i, I like to think that i have reached a certain level of self-awareness but in order to be self-aware you have to quiet things for a bit you have to actually go on a little bit of a journey of self-discovery but we live in a world that doesn't want you to do that they that wants to you know distract you all the time with your with notifications with this with that with with easy with you know entertainment and so it has to be if you go on a journey of self-awareness it has to be a deliberate choice i think absolutely the key word is intentional it, it's not going to happen accidentally and it is so easy to reach for our phones they've become our digital pacifiers. If, <laughs> if, yeah, think about it. If like little it. kids are grumpy yeah. and they're crying, what do we do? We stuff a pacifier in front of them. And, and if we have things going on where we feel uncomfortable or we have 10 seconds uh, and we don't want awkward silence, the phones are right out. And then we don't have to deal with what we're feeling. We don't have to deal with our problems and whatever's going on in our life, which is a little pebble at the top of a mountain, each time we pick that that phone up and kick our problems down the road, that pebble starts to go down the mountain, gathers other pebbles, becomes a boulder, becomes basically an avalanche, and we're at the bottom and it eventually runs us over when we've put it off as long as we can. So how do you how do you start that process of, you know, as you describe it in your book, I was just here uh, as as winning the now, how do you start to really kind of uncover what is real and what's not real. Yeah, so I think the first thing we have to do is create some space. So when when my office closed at the beginning of COVID, I had some discretionary time. Mm -hmm. I we were we were deemed a very dangerous profession because of the aerosols that are generated in our profession. So our office was closed for eight weeks, but we still had to be available for emergencies. So it was kind of this really weird place to be in. But I had more discretionary time than I had had in almost 20 years. And so I knew that I needed to do something to quiet my brain. That I knew for sure. So I committed to 30 minutes of quiet a day. Mm. Just said, I'm going to do that. I don't know how, but I'm going to do that until my dental practice opens back up. Because I knew once we opened, it was going to be pedal to the metal, crazy busy, all of that stuff. So I, I did that. Day one, I failed miserably. And I think that's what we do is we, we set off on this. Uh, we may try to set off on the dis this discovery, but something doesn't go wrong and we abandon it. Yep. Well, I, the first day in quiet, I looked to see how uh, I, I was sitting there for a little bit and I thought, boy, I got to be getting at least close to the 30 minutes. John, I was 46 seconds, in yeah. 30 seconds. <laughs> I can believe it. And that was just, that was such a, uh, that's like the, the foghorn on a big iron ore ship coming mm -hmm. in. It's like, Hey, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what I did is then I started just setting the timer on my watch so I wouldn't have to think about what time it was. Mm -hmm. And then it would let me know when it was 30 minutes. I was not completely focused all that time, but just allowing that space for my thoughts to run, to be quiet, to not be stimulated with my phone, that was the beginning of a huge journey of self-discovery for me. Yeah, and, and it's so fascinating you know, what you say there is because, uh, as I said, it's it's such a it's such a difficult thing for people today to be with themselves for any length of time like that and and to to set aside everything and and i think as i look at you know win the now i think that the important part there is the now because we tend to live and i think it was james joyce my compatriot who wrote one of his books like live at arm's length from ourselves we're always either living in the future or we're living in the past we're very rarely living in the now and again that takes some that's it takes some intentionality to live in the now as opposed to think well if i just do this and i just do that then in a month in a year in two years ten years everything will be great yeah well, the cool thing is, is we have neuroplasticity. We can change the way our brains are wired. And, and James Joyce is 100% correct. 
most people find themselves either stuck in the past because of things that have happened or worried about the future. Uh, most of the time, we don't have very optimistic views of either of those two mm -hmm. times. And we miss out on the most important thing, the thing that's right in front of us, and that's the now. And when we can find ourselves in the present moment, in the same place, mind and body, that's where the magic happens. And then to take that a step further, we find ourselves in the now, and then we look for wins. So just for an example, for me during a day, I always thought that a day was way too big of a time period to measure because I would have, I would come home and my wife would say, hey, how was your day? And I would always come back with, well, this happened. And I would reduce a whole day to one negative <laughs> thing that happened. But what when the now says is for me in my office, a now is a 15 minute chunk of time. So I'm I am scheduled in 15 minute chunks of time throughout the day. Sometimes I need multiples, but it would be so someone who's in an office, it might be hour blocks of time for meetings or different things like that. So I take that unit of time and I think, what does a win look like? So a win in a meeting might look like I'm present in the meeting, I'm focused in the meeting. I'm not thinking about the next meeting. I'm not thinking about something else. I'm right there in the meeting. I'm contributing. I'm listening well, I'm reflecting questions, I'm contributing, all of those things look like wins. The reality is, is that sometimes we're gonna take a loss. Yeah. Maybe the meeting didn't go how you wanted it to. Uh, maybe you weren't able to participate. Well, at the end of that time, if you take a loss, you look back on that loss and you say, you ask only one question, what can I learn from it? Mm -hmm. And then you take that lesson that you've learned and the loss, becomes a win. And I don't know anybody who doesn't like to win. So now when I come home, my wife will ask me, how was your day? I am much more likely to say some of the wins that happened. Right. I may mention the losses, but I'm more likely to have a positive spin on my day because that's my new mindset. Yeah. And it's so interesting that that facet of, of human nature, how we will focus in on, as you said, like uh, something that went wrong during the day, there could be 50 things that went right, but we're focused on the thing that went wrong. It's kind of like when you, I was liking it to when you take a, a, a flight somewhere, you know, you could get to the airport on time, get through security, fine, get on board, plane leaves, every service is great. You land on time and then you're, your luggage is delayed like 15 minutes coming off the plane. Somebody asked you, how was your journey? Terrible. It was awful. Right. <laughs> and, and just, and, and that's how we're wired almost as humans. And, and what you're talking about there is, is it, again, is being intentional, but also looking at, are your losses really losses? Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to reframe, reframe our losses exactly as you said, and, and have just a little bit of perspective. Mm. You know, in the grand scheme of things, 15 minutes late on our luggage, absolutely, that's an inconvenience. It's like yeah. a paper cut. Sure. Yeah, absolutely, I get that. But wow, your plane made it, you got to the airport on time, you're gonna be okay for your meeting, all of those other things are okay. And when I was in school, if I got a 95% on that, that was every bit as much an A as 100%. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. And and the other thing that you mentioned there, I, I think is really important too. It's about, because I think sometimes when people decide to make a change, right, it's great to set big audacious goals, but then if but then you have to remember it's one foot in front of the other. I interviewed one gentleman a couple of years ago, and it always stuck with me. He told me that he was really overweight, lazy, never exercised, and he was miserable. And he was sitting on his couch one day and he said, I'm going to run a marathon, right? And he was about as far away from somebody who could run a marathon as you can be. So he said on his first day, he goes, okay, he walked for three minutes. That's all he did. And the, you know, then a couple of, he did that a few days and a couple, then he walked for five minutes and then so on and so forth. Fast forward two years, he ran his first marathon. But the thing is, he started with he understood the the fact that every, you know, every journey starts with one step, you know, and it's not and you, you're not there's no shortcuts to this either. Yeah. And and that is that is priceless because we all face mountains in our lives. Mm -hmm. If We don't do anything about the mountains. They're always going to be mountains. 
if we choose to look at those mountains and just pick up our phones and that's all we do, guess what? The mountains are always going to be really big. Mm -hmm. But the first step that you do to get onto the mountain, to start climbing it, you'll never have to take that step again. You've taken the first step. The mountain is smaller. And, and we just, we have such a problem with, with taking the first step, but once we take the first step, we start to get that little bit of glimmer of hope. So I always ask people, what is one small but significant step that you can take to move forward? Yeah, absolutely. So the so the first the first book is Win the Now. The next one that's coming out is that damn analogy. Tell me a little bit about does does it build on the first one or is it a different uh, is it a different subject area? Yeah, so there's some similar some similar concepts, but it's uh, it's a standalone definitely book. It's not not like a series. So basically the gist of that is that we are like a dam in the sense that all we are doing is controlling the flow of energy that goes through our bodies mm. so we have an amount of energy that comes into us based on our different habits that we have our sleep how we sleep how we eat how we take care of ourselves all of those kind of things and then we have an out an outflow all the thing all the other things that we do that provide our inputs into the world the thing is, we're really good at the outflow part. We're going to make sure we get our work done. We're going to make sure we get all of the things done that we have to do. But we're pretty bad about the inflow part. Mm -hmm. And so basically what it is, is it, it identifies the problem. It talks about how we can have knowledge of where we are in the moment. Are we full, empty, somewhere in the middle? And then a whole bunch of strategies of how we can turn the tide so that we can have an inflow to match our outflow because when i was burned out it was a problem of having too much on my plate and not taking enough time to take care of myself mm -hmm. that was the equation that showed itself every single time so we talk about that equation we talk about how to tip it in our favor yeah and what's re what's re what's really interesting what i like about that is exactly is we don't pay attention to our inputs as you said our inflows or the I mean, I, I, I like to talk a lot about today is, you know, it's like even people's morning habits. Like if you wake up and you immediately reach for your phone and you you check the news, maybe. And it doesn't matter where you live on the political spectrum. The news is not there to inform you. It's there to provoke you. And and so now you're you're a little probably irritated. Maybe then you go on to social media and you see, oh, Eric, look at Eric. He's standing beside his brand new Lamborghini. Now my life sucks because I'm not as successful as Eric. Turns out that's not your Lamborghini, but, you know, I don't know that. But already, I mean, I can start my day and already I'm in a really bad headspace because of the inputs. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I don't love this about the equation, but it's just true it is way easier to go negative than it is positive. Negativity is everywhere. It's downhill sledding. It's uh, it, it, the momentum is on the side of negativity. We have to be intentional about being positive. So yeah, I, I have had to really discipline myself to not have any social media before I have some quiet time in the morning. It's just I because I know what happens if I start my day with news and social media, I am much less likely to have a good day. Mm -hmm. I just am. I've done that informal experiment with myself. I've had tons of conversations, coaching clients who have used that. And if we start our foot off, if we start off on that foot, it's going to be really hard to turn it back positive. And then we're going to be cynical and then we're going to go into our offices and be cynical, or we're going to be around our families and be cynical, or we're going to, and if we start that way, the chance of us being able to positively affect the temperature in a room is very unlikely. No, ab absolutely. Unless, of course, there are panda videos on, on Instagram, and then they make you feel really good, but then three hours go by and you realize you've done no work because you're watching pandas. <laughs> There's also that. Boy, I, I, and don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect at this either. I have gone down a rabbit hole. Uh, the internet knows that I like fail videos. I'm not no, proud of myself for fail it. Army. 
But man, I can spend a good half hour watching fail army videos and I am almost falling off the couch laughing. And my wife is like, what is wrong with you? I know. No, I have to say, uh, we, whenever my son is home, he's in college, whenever he comes home and my wife's here, we all watch fail army because it's just, it is, it's sad to say it's one of the most entertaining things on TV. Or on, oh on TV. man, I, I wish it wasn't, but it sure is. Yeah. Well, listen, Eric, this has been fantastic. All of Eric's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I work with uh, people to help them become their best version. A lot of people are burned out, stuck. They need help. They don't have anybody in their life to talk to to help formulate a plan. So I come alongside that. We have a program that we work through help people with that. I do keynote speeches on uh, burnout, climbing life's mountains, and I'm starting to do a little bit more speaking in the dental realm as well, which has been a lot of fun. Um, but if you want to get a hold of me, really, my website is the best place to do it, ericrecker.com. And because of the burnout journey, I really want to help other people on, on their burnout journey. So if you want to get to know me a little bit more, a little bit more of my story, sign up for my free five-day knockback burnout challenge. It's a great place to start. If you're, if you're not sure if you're burned out, if you're thinking you are a little bit, if you just want to learn more, that's a great way to kind of dip your toes in it. And one other thing, as far as win the now, if you want to know some of the principles that I use in my life to try to live my life fully in the present, I also have a five principles of win the now that you can sign up for. So I'd love to have a conversation if you're feeling stuck uh, or else just grab one of those and let's stay in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks, Eric. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. And I'd encourage you to go check out Eric's work Uh you know, we all deserve to, we don't deserve to be living in burnout. We don't deserve to be living in this like high stress, you know, especially if we're wearing it as a badge of honor. That's just not right. So I encourage you to go check it out. So thanks again, Eric. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.